Hello, this is day 38 of reading one canto of the Divine Comedy every day. We are on Purgatorio Canto number four, which I will read before giving some brief comments from the Longfellow translation. Whenever by delight, or else by pain, that seizes any faculty of ours, holy to that the soul collects itself. It seemeth that no other power it heeds, and this against that error is, which thinks one soul above another kindles in us. And hence, whenever aught is heard or seen which keeps the soul intently bent upon it, time passes on, and we perceive it not, because one faculty is that which listens, and other that which the soul keeps entire. This is as if in bonds, and that is free. Of this I had experience positive in hearing and in gazing at that spirit. For fifty full degrees uprisen was the sun, and I had not perceived it, when we came to where those souls with one accord cried out unto us, Here is what you ask. A greater opening oft times hedges up with but a little forkful of his thorns the villager, what time the grape imbrowns, then was the passageway through which ascended only my leader and myself behind him, after that company departed from us. One climbs San Leo and descends in Noli, and mounts the summit of Bismantova with feet alone. But here, one needs must fly. With the swift pinions and the plumes, I say, of great desire, conducted after him who gave me hope and made a light for me. We mounted upward through the rifted rock, and on each side the border pressed upon us, and feet and hands the ground beneath required. When we were come upon the upper rim of the high bank, out on the open slope, My master, said I, what way shall we take? And he to me, no step of thine descend, still up the mount behind me win thy way, till some sage es escort shall appear to us. The summit was so high it vanquished sight, and the hillside precipitous far more than line from middle quadrant to the center. Spent with fatigue was I when I began, O oh, my sweet father, turn thee and behold how I remain alone unless thou stay. O oh, son, he said, up yonder drag thyself, pointing me to a terrace somewhat higher, which on that side encircles all the hill. These words of his so spurred me on that I strained every nerve behind him scrambling up until the circle was beneath my feet. Thereon ourselves we seated both of us, turned to the east, from which we had ascended, for all men are delighted to look back. To the low shores mine eyes I first directed, then to the sun uplifted them, and wondered that on the left hand we were smitten by it. The poet well perceived that I was wholly bewildered at the chariot of the light, where twixt us and the Aquilon it entered. Whereon he said to me, If Castor and Pollux were in the company of yonder mirror, that up and down conducteth with its light, thou wouldst behold the zodiac's jagged wheel revolving still more near unto the bears, unless it swerved aside from its old track. How that may be, wouldst thou have power to think, Collected in thyself, imagine Zion, together with this mount on earth to stand, so that they both one sole horizon have, and hemispheres diverse, whereby the road which Phaeton, alas, knew not to drive, thou wilt see how to ne of necessity must pass this on one side, when that upon the other, if thine intelligence right clearly heed. Truly, my master, said I, Never yet saw I so clearly as I now discern, there where my wit appeared incompetent, that the mid-circle of supernal motion, which in some art is the equator called, and I remains between the sun and winter, for reason which thou sayest, departeth hence towards the sep septentrion, what time the Hebrews beheld it towards the region of the heat. But if it pleaseth thee, I fain would learn how far we have to go, for the hill rises higher than eyes of mine have power to rise. And he to me, this mount is such that ever at the beginning down below tis tiresome, and I the more one climbs, the less it hurts. Therefore, when it shall seem so pleasant to thee, that going up shall be to thee as easy as going down the current in a boat, then at this pathway's ending thou wilt be. 
There to repose thy panting breath expect. No more I answer, and this I know for true. And as he finished uttering these words, a voice close by us sounded, Peradventure that will have need of sitting down ere that. At sound thereof, each one of us turned round, and saw upon the left hand a great rock, which neither I nor he before had noticed. Thither we drew, and there were persons there who in the shadow stood behind the rock, as one through indolence is wont to stand. And one of them, who seemed to me fatigued, was sitting down, and both his knees embraced, holding his face low down between them bowed. O oh, my sweet lord, I said, do turn thine eye on him who shows himself more negligent than even sloth herself his sister were. Then he turned round to us, and he gave heed, just lifting up his eyes above his thigh, and said, Now go thou up, for thou art valiant. Then I knew who he was, and the distress, that still a little did my breathing quicken, my going to him hindered not. And after I came to him, he hardly raised his head, saying, Hast thou seen clearly how the sun o'er thy left shoulder drives his chariot? His sluggish attitude and his curt words a little until laughter moved my lips. Then I began, Bellacqua, I grieve not for thee henceforth. But tell me, wherefore seated in this place art thou? Waitest thou an escort? Or has thy usual habit seized upon thee? And he, Oh, brother, what's the use of climbing? Since to my torment would not let me go the angel of God who sitteth at the gate... First, heaven must needs so long revolve me round outside thereof, as in my life it did, since the good size I to the end postponed. Unless, ere that, some prayer may bring me aid which rises from a heart that lives in grace, what profit others that in heaven are heard not? Meanwhile, the poet was before me mounting, and saying, Come now, see, the sun has touched meridian, and from the shore the night covers already with her foot, Morocco. Only really have a few things to say about this. First, the uh, the weird discussion about the sun and its position towards the beginning, I can't quite understand. Um, it has something to do with the fact that with purgatory on one hemisphere of the earth and, let's say, Jerusalem on the op exact opposite end, the sun should pass, you know, perfectly between them along the equator, and so they both have one horizon. They're equidistant from the equator. At least that's what Dante's trying to say. Obviously, his geography is off, but we're going to ignore that for now. Um, however, I don't see why that would cause the sun to... Why the sun rising on his left side instead of his right would be such a... Um, would be such a surprise to him, because doesn't it just depend on where you yourself are facing? But never mind that. Uh, in any case, it might have something to do with his uh, geocentric uh, model of the solar system at that time as well. Uh, I'm really not sure about that. But uh, to move on to other things, um, Virgil says something about the mountain of purgatory as they're climbing up it at angles greater than 45 degrees, as Mark Musa explains some of the uh, some of the verbiage. Um, yeah, it's incredible because he says, oh, don't be worried about how high the mountain is, because although it's really hard to climb at the beginning, it gets easier the further along you make it. And that is 100% true. Um, Aristotle says that virtue is a habit, meaning, you know, if you do one good thing, that's great. But if you're in the habit of doing good things, sure, you are virtuous. And, you know, that would make it such that, you know, to do good at the beginning when you're not used to it, that's hard because then you're breaking old habits. But the further you get along, the easier it is. And then, um, what we're being told is that climbing purgatory is the same, which goes along with the weight analogy with the spirits. They're uh, less weighed down by sin the more they go, and so it would make sense that they're more weightless and more inclined to, uh, to rise as they ascend. And then lastly, uh, we run into another class of the late repentant souls here who are not allowed to enter the, the terraces of the mountain yet, 
because they put off their redemption, sorry, not their redemption, their repentance, all the way to the end of their lives. Belacqua is here, who is a, apparently a well-known loot maker from Dante's city and Dante's day that was uh, known for being very, very lazy. This is all according to Mark Musa. And um, so lazy, in fact, that not only with usual, you know, with work or whatever was he uh, putting it off, he also put off repenting until the very end of his life. Um, and so, again, we have the contrapasso. He has to wait just as long outside of purgatory uh, as, he did, as he put off his repentance before he can begin to ascend. But, as always, uh, the prayers of those living in, in the state of grace can help him to ascend uh, in less time. And that is about all for today. I will see you tomorrow.